good day. Today we're going to discuss the test of hypothesis. Uh, let's assume a superintendent of a school get a report. The national mean NATSA score is 91. Uh, additionally, imagine that his division's uh, students have a mean of 96. Could, there, could the superintendent come to the conclusion that his students perform better than the average student? As we begin to think about it, we might be tempted to agree because, of course, 96 is greater than 91. But keep in mind that the method of selecting samples might differ from the mean of the population, depending on where the sample are picked from. Thus, it may be argued that the discrepancy between the means is not genuine, but just a result of sampling error. In this presentation, we will discover how to provide an answer to that question using statistics that provide context for hypothesis testing. You'll discover how to address several issues of this sort by applying statistics which are discussed in the hypothesis testing theory. Okay, to start, uh, what do we mean when we say hypothesis testing? So, researchers are eager to tackle a multitude of issues. Okay, so scientists may want to learn if the earth is warming. Okay, when determining if a few medicine works, a doctor would want to know if it will reduce their patient's blood pressure. Teachers might want to check if a new teaching method is more effective than the old approach. If a retail merchant is launching a new line of clothing, they may want to know if customers like a specific hue. Manufacturers also in the auto industry are looking at whether the seat belts might help prevent the severity of injuries after a crash. These types of questions can be addressed through statistical hypothesis testing, which uh, it is the decision-making, okay, a decision-making process for evaluating claims about a population. In hypothesis testing, the researcher must define the population under study, state the particular hypothesis that will be investigated, give the significance level, select a sample from the population, collect the data, perform the calculations, which is required for the specific statistical test, and reach to a conclusion. So that's what we call as hypothesis testing. Okay, so let's start. Let's go to first, testing the difference of two variances. Okay, so... Statistical analysts okay, are concerned with examining two standard deviations. For instance, there is a disparity of monthly temperature fluctuation between two cities. An investigator may be interested in examining the difference in cholesterol levels between men and women in another scenario. So these examples are testing the difference of two variances. Okay. Now, this would be the formula for the F-test. So we, ha we have here F is equal to, okay, this one, okay, this is the variance of one sample, and then over the variance of the other sample, where the larger of two variances is placed in the numerator regardless of subscript. So take note, your numerator here should always be greater than the denominator. The F tests have two terms of degrees of freedom, that of the numerator, n sub 1 minus 1, and of that denominator, n sub 2 minus 1, where n sub 1 is the sample size from which the larger variance was obtained. So the F test is used to compare the standard deviations of two variances. 
Okay, we have to bear in mind that the F test, okay, uh, there is a difference between F test and chi square, which compares the sample variance to the population variance. So in this case, we are not comparing to the population variance. So if two independent samples are selected from two normally distributed population in which the variances are equal, okay, and if the variances, okay, the variance 1 and variance 2 are compared as, the sampling distribution of the variance is called F distribution. Okay, so this would be the characteristics of the F distribution. Okay, so the values of F cannot be negative. Of course, it cannot be negative because we are talking about variance. Variance is squared. Uh, the, the, the variance is... Uh, Take note that it is the, the square diba, sa, in the formula. Okay. Because variants are equal uh, always uh, positive or zero. Okay. The distribution is positively skewed. Okay. The mean value of the F is approximately equal to 1. And the F distribution is a family of curves based on the degrees of freedom of the variance of the numerator and a degrees of freedom of the denominator. So when we are finding the F test value, the larger of the, uh, the, 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 larger of the variance, variances is placed in the numerator of the formula. Uh, this is not necessarily the variance of the larger of the two sample sizes. Okay, okay. so this would be the, the assumptions. So the assumptions, the population from which the sample were obtained must be normally distributed okay and the samples must be independent from each other okay so the larger the variance uh, should always be placed in the numerator of the formula regardless of the subscript so we have to bear that in mind and then uh, for two tailed tests the alpha value must be divided by two and the critical value placed on the right side of the f curve so if the standard deviations instead of the variances are given in the problem, they must be squared for the formula for the F-test. Take note that this, okay, this formula is, uh, stands for variance. Now there are some problems na the given is uh, standard deviation. So if that would be the case, then we are going to uh, determine first the variance. When the degrees of freedom cannot be found in the table, okay, later on I'm going to discuss the table, the closest value of the smaller size should be used. Okay, so let's have an example. Okay, so the original supervisor in mathematics hypothesizes that the variance in the math MPS of Rizal division is greater than the variance in the Mabini division at alpha equals 0 0.10, is there enough evidence to support the hypothesis? So here we have the, uh, the data. For the result division, we have 36.8, 72.4, 60.5, 73.5, 61.2, 40 40.1. And for the Mabini division, we have 60.7, 42.7, 51.2, and 38.6. Clearly, in this example, this is a sample. Okay, so the the, the mean uh, that mean that's the the data is taken a sample from the uh, result division and another sample from the div uh, Mabini division. So to determine or to answer this kind of problem, uh, we have this solution. So to solve this one, let's have okay for the solution. So step one, okay, step one, what we are going to do is we are going to state the hypothesis and we have to identify the claim. So in this case, we have here that the mathematics supervisor, regional supervisor hypothesized or hypothesizes that the variance of the math MPS of Rizal division is greater than the variance of the Mabini division. So in this case, if this would be the hypothesis, the claim, Okay, technically, this is the claim of the regional supervisor. So in this case, if uh, the let's say you have mu1, okay, mu1, 
is greater than mu2. Okay. In this case, this would be our alternative hypothesis. So this is our alternative hypothesis, which is the claim of the regional supervisor. Why it is, uh, uh, why it is the uh, alternative hypothesis? Take note that when we talk about null hypothesis, it is always the, uh, it is always stated something like there is no significant. Okay, uh, when we say there is no significant difference between the uh, variances of the two division, it means to say na there are no difference; they are equal. So the variance of the result division is equal to the variance of the Mabini division. So if that would be the case, okay, so this would be our null hypothesis. So for our null hypothesis, we have mu1 is equal to mu2. Okay, mu1 and mu2 is our mean. But take note, since the problem here is variance, therefore our uh, real hypothesis would be from the alternative, then we have the variance of the result division is greater than the variance of the Mabini division. Therefore, our null hypothesis would be the variance of the result division is equal to the variance of the Mabini division. So this would be our null hypothesis. And of course, this is the claim of the uh, regional supervisor. Okay, now step two, what would be the next step? So since we already identified the, uh, the hypothesis, we are now going to compute the test value. So we are going to find the variance of each group. Okay, so let's migrate to Excel. So this is now the data, okay? So take note that the formula for the F test is that we are going to get the uh, ratio between the variance of the two division. So in this case, we are going to get the uh, sample variance. So you have var, sample variance, and then highlight this one, then equal. So the variance for the result division is equal to 246.30 at uh, 3816667. Okay. While the variance, okay, the variance of the uh, Mabini division, okay, is equal to 95.8733 uh, and so on. Now take note that to get the F value, okay, for in getting the F value, we are going to uh, get the ratio between these two numbers. Then take note that our numerator must be greater than the denominator. In this case, since the variance in the result division is greater than the variance of our Mabini division, our numerator must be the result division and the denominator would be the Mabini division. So we have result divided by the Mabini. And our, uh, our uh, variance would be, uh, not variance, the F test would be 2.5698. Round off to 2.57. Okay. So in this case, we could now have here that our F, the computed F test, so this is computed, the, our computed F test or the F value, computed F value, okay, since we have the formula of, uh, we have uh, the sample variance of the result over the sample variance of the Mabini okay, is just equal to uh, uh, 246.38 over ninety-four. Uh, 5.87, which is just equal to 2.57. So 
So that is our computed F value. Now, since uh, we are going to determine whether uh, they have uh, we, they have the uh, is there enough evidence to support the claim of the regional supervisor? So if this would uh, since we are going to determine whether there is enough evidence, we are going to get the tabular value, the tabular F value. Okay. To get in getting the tabular F value, we are going to use the table. Okay. Now, to determine the the tab uh, the to determine the tabular value, let us first set the degrees of freedom. Okay. So since we have numerator and denominator, then we are going to determine first the degrees of freedom in the numerator. Okay. Now to get the degrees of freedom in the numerator, we only have formula of n sub one minus one where n sub 1 is the number of elements in our samples in the numerator. And of course, for our degrees of freedom, okay, of freedom in the denominator, that would be equal to the number of, uh, number of elements in the uh, denominator minus 1. So as we can see here, okay, in our... In our numerator, which is the result division, we have 6. Therefore, we have 6 minus 1 equals 5. And then, for the denominator, we have 4. So, we have 4 minus 1 equals 3. These are important numbers in locating the tabular F value. Okay. So, this would be our tabular F value. So as we can see here, we have the uh, the alpha level. Okay, the alpha level is uh, 0 0.01, and then we have degrees of numerator and then degrees of denominator. Now, if you can still remember, our numerator is equal to five. So this would be the numerator. So five, and the denomin denominator is equal to Three. Now we are just going to locate the number intersecting with these, okay, with this line. So in other words, our tabular F value is equal to five point three one. So our F, okay, for the tabular, say so this is tab is equal to uh, 5.31. In this case, by the way, this example is the example of one-tailed test because our null hypothesis, our, uh, not the null, our alternative hypothesis has a comparison symbol of greater than. So if the comparison symbol if uh, in our alternative, hypo alternative hypothesis would be greater than or less than, then that is a one-tailed test. If the uh, the comparison symbol of our uh, null, uh, our alternative hypothesis would be e uh, not equal to, then that would be two-tailed test. So why is it important to know? Okay, it is important to know because if we are going to to draft okay a graph, okay, assuming this is the graph. So this, since uh, F test is positively skewed, so something like this. Okay. So if we are going to plot the tabular uh, value 5.31, most likely, okay. So this is the 5.31. So anything, if the the value lies within this shaded portion, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis but if we if the uh if we are going to if the value lies here in non-shaded portion then we are going to accept the null hypothesis in this case our our computed f value is 2.57 so 
somewhere here. So, 2.57. So, in other words, since for number, so for a number 4, since the computed f value is lesser than the tabular f value, then our decision is we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. So our decision, uh, not reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. Take note that our null hypothesis is uh, there is uh, our null hypothesis is there is a significant uh, difference. There is no significant difference on the variances of the two division, which is the result division and the Mabini division. Since here we are not going to uh, do not, okay. It must be do not reject. Do not reject the null hypothesis. So since uh, the uh, in our uh, step four, uh, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis, it implies okay, that we are going to reject the alternative hypothesis. So since we are going to reject the null the alternative hypothesis, which is the claim, which is the claim of the original supervisor, then for our interpretation here, we could now say that there is there is uh, not enough evidence, not enough evidence. To support okay, the claim of the regional supervisor. In mathematics, so this would be our interpretation. This would be. Uh, the, the manner of our discussion when we are going to report. Okay, so there is not enough evidence to support the claim of the regional supervisor since the computed p value is less than the tabular f value. And it implies that we are not going to reject the null hypothesis, which implies also that uh, we are going to reject the alternative hypothesis. Since the alternative hypothesis is the claim of the regional supervisor, therefore we, we have statistical evidence not to uh, support or uh, to reject the uh, hypothesis of our regional supervisor in this case. Now this is how we are going to solve manually. But we also have uh, ways, we also have uh, technology in which we are not going to do manually. So let's have uh, Excel. Okay, let's go back to our Excel. So here we have our division, uh, Rizal division, and Mabini division. So using the Megastat, we can now compute or we could now determine if the, uh, the difference uh, is, if there's significant difference in the variances of the two divisions. So we go to add ins and then megastat, and then we are going to have hypothesis test, and then let's have compared to independent groups. Okay, in, that, uh, in our group one, so our group one is the Rizal division, in our group two is the Mabini division. Now take note, our hypothesis difference is zero uh, because uh, our uh, variances, okay, in our, uh, in our, uh, null hypothesis, uh, they are equal. So if, if since if they are equal, if we hypothesize in our alternate uh, uh, null hypothesis as equal, then if we are going to subtract the numbers, then it's equal to 
zero. The alternative is not equal. Okay, they are not equal. Uh, they are greater than. Okay, if the because it is a one-tailed, okay, hypo, uh, one-tailed uh, test. Okay, if it is if the alternative is not equal, meaning it's two-tailed. If it is greater than or less than, then that is altern uh, that is one-tailed test. Now take note here. Okay, we have tests of equal equality of variance. Okay, so we are going to check that one, and then take note in the problem that is uh, the alpha is uh, zero point one zero. So we are going to change the confidence interval into ninety, and then okay, okay. Click no, and let's wait for the result. So here, we have here, okay, the result. So as we can see, let's try to make it larger, okay. This would be the focus of our problem, the F test for equality of variance. So here, the variance of our result division is 246.382, uh, okay, so round off to three decimal places. And the variance also of our uh, Mabini division is 95.873. Okay, round off again. And then the variance is equal to 2.57, which is also the same with what we got in our previous uh, manual computation. And the p-value is uh, 0 0.4672. If the p-value is greater than the uh, established uh, p-value in the problem, Remember the problem that the alpha there is 0 0.01. If the p-value is greater than the level of significance, then we are going to uh, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, take note that if the p-value is greater than the alpha level, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than the alpha level, then we are going to reject the uh, null hypothesis. In this case, uh, we are not going to do the rigorous manual computation. But rather, we are just going to input the data and let the Excel do its work. So this is how we are going to use the mega stat. Let's have another example. Okay, we have here the uh, schools were randomly selected from the list of 50 schools in the division. Is there, significant, uh, is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the variance of the population in East Cluster is greater than the variance of the West Cluster at alpha equals 0 0.05? So our level of significance here is 0 0.05. Okay, let's try to solve manually. If we are going to solve this manually, our first step, okay, for our solution, our step one would be we are going to state the uh, null and alternative hypothesis, okay. As what I have mentioned in the previous discussion, in the previous slide, our null hypothesis is always, okay, the variance of, let's say, East Cluster is equal to the variance of the West cluster. Why we have this kind of uh, mathematical equation or mathematical statement? Take note that the null hypothesis in this case would be there is no significant difference between the variances in the population of East cluster and the West cluster. That is our null hypothesis. Now, if we are going to translate that uh, statement into mathematical statement, since there is no significant difference, then they are equal with each other. Okay. In other words, our alternative hypothesis here, okay, okay, if we go back to the claim okay, here in our uh, example, we have there is uh, the variance. Okay, in the East cluster is greater than the variance of the West cluster. So in other words, okay, that would be our alternative hypothesis. Greater than. 
the variance of the West Cluster. And this would be the claim. Okay, take note. This is the claim in our problem. And take note also that the alpha, the level of significance is 0 0.05. Okay, next step, we are going to compute. We are going to compute okay, the uh, computed F value. Okay, let's try to have the computed F value. Okay, take note that the formula for the computed F value is that we have the okay, variance of the East cluster over the variance of the West cluster. So let's try to move or let's try to migrate to Excel. So this is the uh, Excel format of the, uh, of the data in the problem. So what we're going to do here, let's try to determine first the variance of the East cluster. Now take note in the problem, it's clearly stated there that there is a sample from the East cluster and sample of the West cluster. Since it is stated there that it's a sample, then we are going to have the variance of the sample. Okay, and then they highlight there. And then here, the variance Okay, so first let's try to determine which among or which between the two is uh, has a larger uh, variance. So clearly here, we could have the East cluster is greater than the West cluster in terms of its variance. Therefore, our numerator would be the East cluster and the denominator would be the West cluster. Take note that the F test, there should be greater numerator compared to the denominator. So in this case, we have this one the variance of the East cluster divided by the variance of the West cluster, which is equal to 9.80. So take note, we have here, uh, you have 12,367.905, and here we have 1,261.90. Okay, so let's have... Let's try to write that one in our solution. So we have okay, the variance in the East cluster since it's, a great, uh, it's much greater compared to the West, so it should be placed in our numerator. So you have uh, 12,367.905 all over. We have uh, 1,261.90 which is equal to, uh, as what we have uh, got the, in our uh, Excel, we have 9.80. Okay, so this would be our computed F value. So let's try to have the uh, tabular F value. So to determine our tabular F value, we have first to determine the uh, degrees of freedom in the numerator, and the degrees of freedom of the denominator. So take note that the formula for this is you have n sub 1 minus 1. And for the numerator, since the numerator is East cluster, uh, they are, there are 7. Okay. In this case, you have East cluster 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 minus 1 is 6. And for the denominator, we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And since it's 6, then we have uh, 6 minus 1 equals... Ah. N sub 2 minus 1 is equal to 6 minus 1 equals 5. Take note that the 6 here is not taken from the uh, results in above. It is taken from the number of data in our West cluster. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Now let's go to our table. So for the numerator, okay, 6. And the denominator is 5. 
So let's try to have. Okay. So this would be the computed F value. So the computed, uh, the tabular rather, the tabular F value is equal to 4.95. So if we are going to draw that one in the graph, So since it is a positively skewed, so something like this. Okay. So for our tabular, so this would be our tabular. So that is 4.95. So in this case, and the computed is 9.80. So somewhere here. Okay. So this is 9.80. So, as what I have mentioned in the previous discussion or in the previous slide, that if the computed, if the computed F value lies within this shaded portion, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, for our step four, for our step four, we could have since the uh, computed F value is greater than the tabular F value, then we could say that uh, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. That implies that we are going to accept or do not reject the alternative hypothesis. Now take note that in this case, the alternative hypothesis is the claim okay, in our problem. Therefore, we could now say here for our step 5, we could now say here that uh, there is enough evidence to support okay, the claim of the researcher. Okay, so what is the claim of the researcher? The claim of the researcher is that the variance of the population in the East cluster is greater than the variance of the West cluster at alpha equals 0 0.05. Now let's try to have that one in the mega stat. So this is the mega stat. What we are going to do, we go to add ins, mega stat, and then we go to hypothesis test, and then we have compared two independent groups. In this case, our group one would be the east cluster, and our group two would be the west cluster. Okay, here. Uh, the hypothesis uh, hypothesis difference is zero, and then our alternative hypothesis is as we can have in our uh, in our uh, null hypothesis, it is greater than okay. And then since the alpha is zero point zero five, then our confidence interval is ninety five percent, and then we are going to click the test of equality, and then okay, okay, let's wait. So here, we could have say here that the F-test, uh, we are going to focus only to this portion, the F-test. Since the F-test of equality, uh, equality of variance is, uh, we have here the results. Uh, the variance of the East cluster is 12,367.90, uh, round off. Let's just round off. And then the West cluster is 1,261.90. And then the F value is 9.8, which is also the same of what we have computed okay, in our manual computation. And here, as we can see here, the cell for the P value is shaded. If the, the cell for the P value is shaded, it means to say that it is less than 0 0.05.
since the p-value here is less than 0 0.05, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So this is the easiest way to determine the significant difference um, uh, between the variances of two samples. So that's how we are going to do using the mega stat. So let's have the testing the difference between the two means of independent samples. So in this case, the population standard deviations are not known. So in these cases, the t-test is used to test the difference between the means when the two samples are independent and when the samples are taken from the two normally or approximately normally distributed populations. So the samples are independent samples when they are not related with each other. Okay, so let's have this one. So the formula for the t-test for testing the difference between two means which are independent with each other. The samples used in this case would be independent for each other. We have this first formula. So the variance are assumed to be equal. Uh, so we have the formula. T equals uh, the quantity, the mean of the first sample minus the uh, sample mean of the second samples minus the population mean of the first, um, uh, first group minus the population mean of the second group all over the square root of the variance of the first group over the number of elements in the first group plus the variance of the second group divided by the number of elements in the second group. So this would be the formula if the variance are assumed to be equal or unequal rather. However, if the variances are assumed to be unequal, we are going to have, uh, assumed to be equal rather, we are going to have this formula. So you have the difference of the two sample means minus the difference of two population means all over. You have the square root of the, uh, the number of elements minus one times the variance of the first group plus the number of elements minus one of the second group times the variance of the second group all over. You have uh, the uh, the sum of the two uh, the sum the sum of the samples uh, minus two times the square root of one over n sub one plus one over n sub two, where uh, the degrees of freedom are equal to the smaller of uh, n minus one uh, n sub one minus one or n sub two minus one. Now take note: when can we say that the uh, variances of uh, the two samples are uh, assumed to be an equal or assumed to be equal. Remember that we have already the discussion on the uh, F-test. Now, if the p-value of the uh, F-test that we have, the, we have uh, presented in the previous discussion, then uh, if it's less than 0 0.05 or the uh, the null hypothesis would be uh, rejected, then our uh, variances are equal. So they are assumed to be equal. Now, if uh, the p-value is greater than 0 0.5 or the null hypothesis in the F-test would be, uh, we are going to, uh, it is failed to reject, then we are going to use the variances are assumed to be an equal. Okay. Let's have this example. The regional supervisor in mathematics hypothesizes that the mathematics MPS of Rizal division is greater than the Mabini division at alpha equals 0 0.01. Is there enough evidence to support the hypothesis? And we have the same um, data that is presented in the previous discussion. Now, let's have this one. Take note that we already, uh, we already solved the uh, F-test here. Okay, from the previous discussion that we have, we had uh, we have the result stating that there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the variance of the number of passenger, uh, the variances of the two samples uh, is uh, greater than uh, uh, 
uh, uh, greater than the other. Now, in this case, since uh, we are going to reject, okay, we it fails to reject, uh, it fails to, uh, yes, correct, it fails to reject the uh, claim, then it means to say that they are assumed to be equal because uh, from the previous discussion that we had, uh, they are, uh, we uh, we failed to reject the now the the claim so for our step one for our solution we are going to state the uh, the null the hypothesis or the two hypotheses rather so our null hypothesis okay we have here that since we are talking about the mean the MPS the mean percentage score of a Rizal division and the Mabini division. So here, our null hypothesis would be uh, the mean of the first uh, division, which is uh, the Rizal division, is equal to the mean of the second division, which is the Mabini division. Okay, so there is uh, there is uh, there is no significant difference. Okay, since they they don't have significant difference, it means to say that they are equal. For the alternative hypothesis, okay, we have here that the mean okay, of the result division is greater than okay, the mean of the Mabini division. Okay, and take note that this would be our uh, claim. Take note that this would be the claim. Uh, the, res the, the math MPS of result division is greater than the uh, Math MPS of the Mabini division. Okay. Now take note that the first group, okay, let's say the N sub 1, which is our uh, Rizal division, has a number, uh, has the number of elements of 6, whereas the second group has the number of uh, 4. Now take note in the previous slide that we had, okay, the degrees of freedom would be. Uh, the n minus 1 provided that the n is much smaller compared to the other n. So in this case, our degrees of freedom would be equal to 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. In this case, this is a one-tailed test. Why it is a one-tailed test? Because our alternative hypothesis okay, stating that there is a uh, greater than Okay, the other group is greater than the second group. Okay, now, if that would be the case, then we are going to have the uh, one-tailed test. Now, if it is less than again, okay, if it is less than, then still that's a one-tailed test. If it is not equal with each other, then that would be a two-tailed test. Now, if we are going to, uh, how, if we are going to get the, uh, the boundary, okay, or the critical area, okay, in which we are going to, uh, that would be our boundary to determine whether we are going to reject or to accept or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We are going to have this table. Okay, take note that our degrees of freedom is 3. And then we have one tail at uh, 0. 1, 0. So this would be our value. Okay, so you have 1.638. Okay. So in other words, if we are going to draw a normal curve here, okay, assuming that's a normal curve, now take note that we have a one tail test, then you have this one. So this would be our boundary, which is 1.638. So in other words, if the value okay, lies okay, in the shaded portion, then uh, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. 
However, if our computed value will lies on the unshaded portion of the normal curve, then it fails to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so for our second step, we are going now to determine the computed t value. For in this case, since we are go, uh, since the t value here, uh, the the f value here, okay, implies that there is a uh, there is, uh, uh, it fails to reject the claim, which is the other group is, the variance of the other group is greater than the, the group being compared, then they are assumed to be equal. So if that would be the case, uh, they are assumed to be equal, then you have the formula, the quantity, the difference of their uh, mean, sample mean, minus the difference of their population means over the square root of uh, the number of elements of the first group minus 1 times the variance of the first group plus the number of elements in the second group minus 1 times the variance of the second group over you have the sum of their samples so n plus n sub 1 plus n sub 2 minus 2 times the square root of 1 over n sub 1 plus 1 over n sub 2 okay so let's have uh, let's migrate to our uh, excel okay so since the formula that we had uh, in the t test is we are going to have the mean the sample mean then let's get the, uh, the the sample mean of each group so you have uh, let's say mean one using the formula in the excel okay you have average oops Okay, and this would be also the mean of the second group. Okay, so you have equal sign average, and then this one. Okay, and then uh, another thing that you are going to get is the variance of each group. So you have, okay, for the variance of group one, so you have equal sign variance oops variance and then this must be sample okay okay and then you have the variance of the second group sample okay close and then we already have the the n, our n1, would be, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, do we have 7 elements in the uh, in the slides? I'm sorry, I have uh, I presented the wrong data. So let's start again. So this will be the data for the division of Rizal, and you have uh, the division of Mabini. So the first step that we're going to do is to determine the sample mean of each group. So in this case, we're going to use the formula in the uh, Excel, okay, and of course the mean of the second group, okay, so this one, average, okay, then you have the uh, variances, okay, the variance of the group one, okay, so you have variance, oops, Okay, sample variance and of course the variance for the second group okay okay the n 
of the first group would be you have 6 and the n for the second group would be 4. Okay, so we already had all the necessary information. So in this case, we can now use the formula. Okay, so for the t test, the t computed t sample, so you have uh, equal sign, okay, and then you have two open parentheses indicating the uh, the numerator. So you have mean 1 minus mean 2. Close. Minus, of course, uh, the uh, population, the difference of the population uh, mean would be equal to 0. Okay. Divided by Okay, you have uh, two square roots, so you have, okay, again, two, paren two open parentheses. So you have the square root, okay, the square root of, you have uh, n minus 1, so that would be, uh, this is 6 minus 1, 5, let's just type 5, times, okay, the variance of the first group, okay, closed. Uh, there must be another open parenthesis here. Okay, times, you have, uh, there must be another parenthesis here, okay. Times, you have uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, times the variance of the second group, okay, all over, mm -hmm. uh, here you have, here this is just only two parentheses here, okay, here you should have Another parenthesis here, so that the denominator would be uh, captured. So you have one close. This is another close. Okay. Uh, so n sub one plus n sub two minus two. So you have six plus four is 10, minus 2 is 8. Okay, closed. Uh, this is just only two parentheses. Had we already closed the, first, the square root? Not yet. Okay, close. So this is this first group times the square root. Okay square root okay there should be two parentheses here you have one divided by six plus you have uh, one divided by four then close okay very good and then another closed and that would be the close here. And there should be another close for the general. So this would be... Okay. Oops. Let's just try to have correction. So the T value is 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.06711. Let's try to check first our formula if it is, if it is correct. So you have here um, B sub, uh, so you have the mean, oh my goodness, so this is minus, okay, correct, this is must be, uh, of course, this is minus zero, okay, uh, let's try to enclose it with in open parentheses, indicating that they are one term, and then you have here, that makes, Okay. 
So square root of you have the n minus 1. So here it must be. Okay. Let me have this one here so that it is much more weaker. So you have the square root. Then you have 5 because that is n minus 1. So 6 minus 1 is 5 times the uh, variance. That's correct. Plus, you have 3 because 4 minus 1. Okay. Ah, okay. I see now where I got my wrong parentheses. So here, here, there must be parentheses here. And let me check here. Oops. It's very big. So you have mm -hmm. that we close already. This is one. Now let us check. Hmm. This is correct. Plus. Oh, okay. Here it should be one parenthesis to enclose this one. Okay, because 8 is included in the square root. Now let us check. Okay. So in this case, we have uh, the t value, the computed t value is 1.0247 or round off 1.025. Okay, let's try to write that one in our uh, PowerPoint. So here we have, uh, this is equal to, our mean of the first group is uh, that you have 57.42 minus uh, 48.3, okay, minus, of course, this is zero, okay, all over. So you have the square root of, so here this is, uh, our n sub 1 is 6, so that is 5, because n minus 1, times, you have the variance of the first group is 246.38, divide, uh, not yet, plus, you have, uh, this is n sub 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, times, you have the variance of the second group is 95.81 all over. So n sub 1 is 6 plus 4, that's 10, minus 2 is 8. Okay, times the square root of 1 over uh, 6 plus 1, uh, it must be 1 over, so you have 1 over 4, okay, which is equal to, you have 1.025, now if we are going to, okay, uh, locate this 1.025 in our uh, normal curve so approximately that is located here okay so in this case for our three okay step three since the uh, computed okay here the computed p value is less than okay the tabular t value then in this case, our implication, so this means that, okay, it failed, uh, the, the null hypothesis, okay, 
fails to okay fails to reject okay the null race is failed to reject so which implies here that the alternative hypothesis which is the claim of the uh, the research is accepted so this is uh, rejected rather okay so in this case our okay interpretation would be okay there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Remem remember, the claim of the uh, researcher or the regional supervisor is Mabini, uh, the Rizal division has greater MPS as compared to the Mabini division. Since it fails, uh, since that the null, uh, not the null, the claim of the regional supervisor is rejected, therefore, we could now say that the mean of the uh, Mabini is just comparable to the mean of the Rizal division. Okay. So let's have another example. So let's have this one. The school were randomly selected uh, from the list of 50 schools in the division. Is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the population of East Cluster is greater than the West Cluster at alpha equals 0 0.05? Okay, in this example, again, uh, this, uh, the data is actually uh, the same with the data that is previously discussed. And then, uh, in this case, uh, to solve this one, okay, first we have to determine if the variances of the two uh, samples are uh, assumed to be equal or assumed to be unequal. Now, from the previous discussions that we had, we already had this uh, solution that in this case, the variances of this uh, of uh, these samples are assumed to be unequal. Okay, so in this case, our first step, of course, is to determine the uh, the hypothesis. So let's have the null hypothesis. So in this case, the, our null hypothesis would be the uh, mean of the first group is equal to the mean of the second group. So there is no significant difference between the mean of the two groups, the group of the cluster, uh, East Cluster and the West Cluster. For the alternative here, okay, so we have the mean of the first group, okay, here, uh, greater than the West group. So greater than the West group. So this would be the claim of the researcher and in this case, and of course, this one is the one-tailed test because the alternative hypothesis, uh, you have there the greater than uh, comparison symbol. If the comparison, sub comparison symbol in the alternative hypothesis would be less than, still that is a uh, one-tailed hypothesis, a uh, one-tailed test. And if this would be not equal, then it is uh, two-tailed test. Okay, so in this case, uh, we have our n, okay, the n sub 1 of the first group, which is the West Cluster, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you have 7. And the n for the second group is equal to 6. So in this case, our degrees of freedom, okay, is that we are going to choose the least number of elements uh, between the two clusters. So in this case, we are going to choose the west cluster, which is 6. So you have n sub 2 minus 1 would be equal to 6 minus 1 equals 5. So therefore, our uh, degrees of freedom would be 5. And take note that our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Now let's look for the, uh, the critical values or the boundary. 
So in this case, since you have 5 and you have one daily test, 0 0.05, so you have a 2.015, okay, 2015. Okay, so therefore, our uh, tabular, okay, tabular T value would be, okay, 2.015. So if we are going to, uh, okay, illustrate this one in a uh, normal curve. So here, so this is a 2.015 and any values, okay, okay, any values that belongs to, uh, that will fall in this portion would be uh, uh, rejected. And here, it must be uh, fail to reject. So since uh, the variances of this case is assumed to be an equal, okay, for our two, we are going to use the formula T is equal to the difference of their sample mean minus the difference of their population mean over the square root of the variance of the first group over the number of number of elements on the first group plus the variance of the second group over n sub 2. Okay, so let's try to use the Excel in this case. Peace. So you have uh, for the so you have uh, open parentheses two open parentheses signifying the difference of the two means sample mean minus the difference of uh, population mean which is equal to zero close and this would be the numerator divided by the denominator is the square root so you have uh, square root okay you have two uh, L, uh, you have two terms there that to be added so you have the you there should be another parenthesis so that is the variance of the first group divided by the number of elements in the first group plus you have the variance of the second group divided by the number of elements of the second group and that must be close and another close so that would be the t value so let's try to write this one in our uh, powerpoint okay so in this case for our here our mean is 209 okay it must be 209 Point seven one minus one hundred two eight point five minus zero all over you have the square root of uh, one twelve thousand three hundred sixty seven point nine one over seven plus you have uh, one thousand two hundred sixty one point nine over six, which is equal to one point eight three. Okay, so in this case, uh, where does this one point eight three belongs to? You have here somewhere here. So in this case, for our step three, since the computed t value is less than the tabular okay tabular t value this implies that okay in this case our null hypothesis is fail to reject which implies that the alternative hypothesis must be rejected. Okay. Again, in this case now, for our step number four, 
we could now conclude that uh, there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Remember that the claim is our alternative hypothesis. So you have the East Cluster, the mean of the East Cluster is greater than to the West Cluster. Okay, so it fails to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, uh, we are going to reject the alternative, which is the claim. So just, there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Now, how can we use the megastat to determine the t-value of each problems? Okay, the, the previous example and this one. Now, we go back to our Excel. Now, in this case, remember that in uh, the what we had here is the... Uh, it is assumed that their variances are equal. So in this case, we go to add ins, megastat, we go to hypothesis test, and then compare two independent groups. Okay, so here we are going to highlight the Rizal and the Mabini. In this case, the hypothesis is zero, and our alternative hypothesis must be greater than. Okay, and... Since uh, their variances are assumed to be equal, so uh, we are going to click that one. Then click OK. okay. And then, do you wish to? Uh, no. So in this case, you have, uh, let's make it bigger. Okay. So T test pool variance, you have uh, degrees of freedom is 8, uh, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, yes, it matters because we have 8 plus uh, 6 plus 4 is 10 minus 2 is 8. Okay. Now, what we are going to look for, we have the T value, it, uh, 1.025. Let's try to check. Yes. If we are going to round off this one, 1.0247, this is round off to 1.025. Okay. But if you are going to look for the exact value of the T you have here, which is the same to what we had in our calculation, manual calculation. And the p-value here is greater than 0 0.05. Okay, so you have 0 0.1677. So it is really greater than 0 0.05. So since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then the null hypothesis would be failed to reject. So that is also the same with what we had uh, computed manually. Now, uh, in this case, we can use the megastat in lieu for the manual computation. Now, for the second example, okay, here we go to add ins, megastat, we go to hypothesis test, and then compare two independent groups. Okay, so we are going to highlight the data for the first uh, group and the second one. And then here the hypothesis uh, zero, alternative must be greater than. And in this case, the t test would be uh, they are uh, an equal variance. Okay. And then we go to OK. So here we have the degrees of freedom. Uh, it doesn't matter in, the, in this case because what we are going to look for uh, is the this one. Okay. And then here our T value is 1.826, which is if we are going to look for our uh, t value in the computed or in the manual computation. So that is 1.826. And 1826. But if we are going to look for the exact value of this t value, you have to run. Okay. And in this case, the p value is greater than 0 0.05. Okay. So in other words, the null hypothesis is failed to reject, which is the same with what we had in our previous. Uh, discussion which is doing it manually okay